Hello everyone and welcome back to this new video. In today's video we're going to keep talking about TK Inter, that as you may know is a very popular user interface toolkit for Python. In today's video we're going to learn how to create a complete and functioning program to download and show right here below and ask key art based on some text entered by the user. I think this is an interesting example for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're going to introduce a couple of new important widgets. The entry widget that will allow our program to actually receive user input. And then we're going to introduce the text field that will actually allow us to show some output based on the input from our user. Of course, the output is going to be the result of some processing. We're going to use the requests module to create a function that will allow our program to communicate with an API that's provided by this website. And I want to point out that I have not developed this website. This API was developed by Giovanni Capellotto. And so the API provided by this website allows us to receive as a response to our requests an ASCII art based on some text that we are sending to the API. And so I'd say, let's give our program a try first. I'm going to insert hello world and press download ASCII art. And here it is, our ASCII art provided by the API based on what we inserted. And as you can see, a label also appeared down here to credit the website. So make sure to also watch the previous video about TK Inter. I'm going to leave you a link right below in the description. And most importantly, please subscribe. This is going to be really important to allow me to provide you even more interesting videos about Python and programming in general. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is to import the TK Inter module. Okay, I'm going to import it as TK in order to make it easier for us to access the modules classes. Then we need to create a window. And as we've said in the previous video, the window is nothing more than a root widget, the parent widget that we're going to use to actually host the, all, all the other widgets that we're going to actually use. So window equals tk dot tk. So I'm instantiating, as you see, the top level widget. Okay. Now we can start to define the windows properties such as a geometry, meaning a height and a width for our window. So window.geometry and I pass first of all the width so I can do 900 by 550 then we want of course to add the title to our window so window.title and we can pass something like ASCII art downloader we can now execute our window by calling the main loop method on the window instance so I can do window.main loop but it's also best practice to actually call this line of code from within a if clause. So if name equals main, we're then going to call the main loop method. So let's go ahead and execute the script. As always, you can execute it as a normal script. I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to go with a debug function. Debug. And here it is, our main widget titled ASCII Art Downloader. So let's go ahead and start creating our first inner widget. We can add a welcome label. Okay, and we can do tk.label. And we need to add, first of all, our window. Then we can add some text and we can write something like welcome. Insert a word or a sentence to download. Okay. And then we can maybe change the font. Remember, we can do something like font, maybe Helvetica. And font size, we can go by 15. Now, of course, we need to actually provide some information about the orientation of our widget within the grid system that we are using to actually create the layout of our window, meaning the layout of all the widgets within our application. So we can do welcome label dot grid. We pass row zero because we want it on the first row. Okay, it's going to be the first widget within our graphical user interface. Then we add column and we add zero just as well. We can add something like sticky and we can go by north because we want it on top of all the other widgets. We want it centered. Okay, then we add pad x 
20 and then pad y we can add 10. So let's go ahead and execute once again our script. And yeah, it worked, but in fact it kind of worked, because as we said, we wanted our label to be centered, right? And well, sticky north seems to be not enough. We actually need to define another property for our window. So let's go ahead and define right below here, below the title, window.grid column configure. And we want to pass first of all a zero, and then we add weight. 1. So with weights 1, we're allowing our windows to actually expand, alright? So let's check our user interface once again, let's save and execute, and here it is, perfect, very well. It's now time to introduce the first new widget in today's video, the entry widget. So let's go back to our text editor, and here we can do text input, so creating a variable called the text input that I'm going to use to actually instantiate the new widget, okay? So tk.entry, and if we wanted to, we could actually pass a width parameter, okay? Expressed in characters, like for example, 60. But because we've actually told our columns to expand with weight one, we don't need to worry about our entries with because the widget it's going to take all the space of a column okay we still need of course to actually configure it within our grid system so row one because we want it on the row below the welcome label then we can add column we say zero and then we need to add sticky and we can set west east which is going to tell our text input widget to actually stick to both left and right, and that will result in uh, the text input actually taking as much space as possible. So let's make a couple of examples to further clarify it. So let's execute our window. And you see, of course, we have our text input that is taking as much space as there is. Okay, but if I would have actually excluded the sticky parameter, this is what would have happened, okay? But of course we want it to expand, so we're going to leave sticky here. We can, however, add some padding, so pad x, and then we can, we can define something like 10. Let's go ahead and execute once again. Perfect. We now need to add the button widget that, once pressed, will allow us to actually download the ASCII art. And, of course, we can instantiate a new button, like so. Download button equals tk dot button, we pass text, download ASCII art, and, of course, we want to pass a command and we need to assign to this parameter the name of a function that we want to call. We can call it download ASCII. We will define this function in a second. Let's first position our widget within the grid system. So download button.grid row number two, column zero, sticky west and east. And we can add some padding, so pad x, 10, same thing for pad y, 10. So let's go ahead and define a new function that we're going to call download ASCII. At the moment, we can just use the pass instruction just to, you know, check how the user interface actually looks. I would say perfect. Okay, so from within this function, we want to download the ASCII art corresponding to the user input and we want to show it within a new widget, a text widget. And we can start by checking if the user has actually inserted the proper input, okay? If text input, which is our widget, dot get, then let's go ahead, text response equals text input dot get, else, so if the input field is empty, basically, text response equals, and we can just pass some sort of error message, like text input can't be 
empty. And by the way, we can add a colon here instead of an exclamation mark. Let's now create the text widget. We're going to show to show the response. So text widget equals tk dot text. And then we do text widget dot insert. And we add tk dot end, which corresponds to the position just after the last character in the buffer. Okay. And then, of course, we add our text response. We can now set the position for our text widget within the grid. So text widget dot grid row, and we can pass three and then column zero sticky west east, of course, as a string. And we can add some padding as well. So like, for example, our download button. Like so. Cool, let's go ahead and execute it once again. Okay, cool. Welcome. Insert a word or a sentence to download. Hello, folks. Download ASCII art. Perfect. Of course, we still need to actually download the ASCII art corresponding to the input, but we now know that our widget, the text widget, works. Perfect. Very well, let's go ahead and now import the requests module. Requests. And if you've never heard about the requests module, it's a very convenient library that allows us to easily make HTTP requests. Hence the name. So, right here, we can do user input equals text input dot get. You can now do payload, a dictionary with text as key, and the user input as value. We can now make our get request to the API. So response equals requests dot get. And first of all, we need the address. So HTTP RT dot heroku app dot com slash make and as params we just pass the payload you can actually move this one right here perfect now text response is going to correspond to response dot text so let's go ahead and execute the script once again Okay, we can insert something like Python for the win, download ASCII art, and here it is, perfect. Cool, our program is almost finished, it works like a charm, but we still have time to add a credits label. So, credits label is going to be tk dot label with window and text gonna pass ASCII art by art ii dot heroku app dot com let's now place it within the grid so credits label dot grid row four column zero sticky south and pad x can add 10. So let's execute it one last time. Thanks for watching. Download ASCII art. Perfect. Okay, everyone, that was it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There is a ton of new material coming out that I would really like to share with you. Well, that was it. As always, stay awesome and happy coding.